Welcome to the very first episode of In Season Outdoors TV. I'm your host, Tim Moore. I'm here with Chuck Macho Nacho Fritz. This is the man behind the camera. Uh, we're excited to bring you this first episode. This is a, a new format for our show. If you followed us along Tim Moore Outdoors TV, uh, this format's basically just going to highlight the bites. It'll have some technique, some tackle, but this is mostly going to highlight specific bites in specific places at specific times of the year. So we're really happy that you, you're uh, tuning in. We hope you enjoy the show, and uh, we'll have stay tuned. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll have a lot more coming up for you here uh, very soon. Champlain. The last couple of times we've been out here, most generally, uh, once we find the fish, they've been cooperative. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a camera here this time, Matt, <laughs> so that's probably going to screw us. Just, just giving you a heads up. Well, it's certainly, uh, I've had a couple other, over the years, this is my seventh year as a charter captain, had a couple of film crews out with me, and I certainly get the struggle to... <laughs> put everything together um, it's just that curse of the camera yeah well it's funny I had uh, Lawrence Pine from Vermont Public Television there we go, there we go. hooked up nice. nice that didn't take long there we go I just kept dropping it to the bottom and, and just jigging it working it up off the bottom nice we'll save the Lawrence Pine story till we get this fish netted yeah this does not feel like a Lake Winnipesaukee lake trout I can tell you that it's probably not a giant by your standards, but I can tell you. Head if, shaker if, nonetheless. Yeah, this action here on Wayne Pasaki would be, um, take it easy now. <laughs> <laughs> this could be my biggest lake shot ever if we get it in the boat. You know, they, the state does a, a good job of managing the population of lake trout in New Hampshire, but due to angler demand, it's tough to manage a lake like Winnipesaukee with its sure. you know population of anglers and recreational people for a, a trophy fishery yep um, and just you know what I know of like the lake lake uh, trout in in our you know like Sebago is a similar lake and there's been a lot of studies done in Sebago and uh, what they've told us over there is that the lake trout in Sebago between 23 and 30 inches are cannibalistic yep and so what they've done is they've set um, a slot. 23 to 30 inch fish have to go back. Sure. Fish under 23 inches, take all you want. Yep. And what they're hoping is between the fishermen and the cannibalistic lake trout, they'll clean up the smaller fish. Sure. And you're only allowed one fish over 30 inches. There you go. Well, 15 inches is the, the break point. We don't have a slot. I would like to see that here. I'd like to see a slot for many of our species here in the lake. And obviously, Vermont's got a very diverse fishery between Champlain and the inland lakes, I'll call them, you know, such as Bomazine, Dunmore, St. Catherine, Lake Willoughby, the state record lake trout out of Lake Willoughby, I believe is 38 pounds. So, uh, you know, a very deep cold water lake and they still get large lake trout up there. Uh, last year I heard of a 21 pounder caught here in Champlain. That's the biggest in years. Uh, sea lamb prey were a big challenge for us for a long time. And Vermont and New York have worked in concert very well in getting our lamprey controlled, taken care of. And we've seen the fruits of their labor. The salmon uh, and lake trout have come along very well. Uh, most of the lampreys that I've had on fish this year have been juvenile young ones. I've found very few adult lampreys. If I had to take a guess, I've seen 20 to 25 percent of the fish have had lamprey hits on them. Um, years ago, it was 80 percent. You know, back in the late 80s, early 90s, lampreys were just doing a job on this lake and the fishery was showing it. Very skinny fish. Um, so hopefully we keep a control on it. Ah, I see the leader. See nice nice color. Color. A little color. It's like a nice yeah, laker. A much bigger reflection than we see in one of Yeah, that's a good trout. That's a nice fish. That's definitely my biggest lake trout. There Look at that. Go. Beautiful. Perfect. There's our show. We're done. <laughs> see you next time. <laughs> That's just a start. So we'll put the grippers on him here so we don't hurt him. It looks like he put it pretty deep. Let's yep. see how bad he's bleeding. If we got to keep him, we will. Nice fish. Let me know what, what, what jig came out. That's the good. jig did come out. Perfect. Look at that. 
Glad it came out after it was in the yeah, net. He's not bleeding too bad, Tim. I think he's no. going to be okay. That's nice. And a good representative average trout for here. There are definitely a lot bigger ones in here. Hopefully yep. we get on some bigger ones. Beauty, what would you say? That's six or eight pounds? Yeah, that's what I would say, right in that six to eight pound yep. range. Well, it's Get it's close to of you too. close to my biggest. I don't eight's my biggest. <laughs> so that's a nice fish, though. Hopefully they put up an gonna... unbelievable fight when you're in deep water. They're so fun. It's addictive. I don't it know is. if it's just me or just us. Captain Matt Trombley, Third Alarm Charters and Guide Service, offering trips on Lake Champlain, the Hudson River, and Lake Ontario. Been guiding for about 10 years, uh, licensed charter captain going on seven years now. Started off with a little small home based business where I used to do just uh, stuff on local lakes and ponds in Vermont. Um, steadily grown to almost 150 trips a year now. We transition out of our trolling by midsummer. The, the good sized lake trout, there is literally hundreds of thousands of lake trout in Lake Champlain, it's 127 miles long. And a lot of those lake trout are suspended um, up towards the thermocline in the early summer. When we're getting landlocks, we're getting a mixed age class of lake trout. The bigger lake trout midsummer transition to the deeper water usually humps in 85 to 105, 110 feet down. In certain places we target that we know we're gonna find larger numbers of lake trout. Yeah, it was funny though, we had a, on the new lure in my signature series, Nervous Minnow from Daddy Mac Lures had recently just hit the market. And that lure was specifically designed with that lake trout vertical jig bite in mind. So I was really excited to get up there and try that. And we get out on the boat and, and Matt said, you know, I don't mind you fishing with the nervous minnow, but at some point you may want to switch to a bucktail with a curly tail grub on it because that's kind of a staple here on Lake Champlain. And I said, that's fine. Uh, but within about an hour, everybody was fishing a nervous minnow uh, because that lure was just catching fish. Um, check it out. It's, it's, it's cool to, to come up and experience the difference in these fish, Matt, because down by us, they're concentrating in deep water basins. Sure. Big, deep basins, because yep. the smelter in there. No doubt. Uh, and the water's warm. I mean, just, just putting that fish in the water, the surface temperature here is much, much cooler than it is in Winnipesaukee right now. And when he's, when he's cool for this time of year, it's what have you been normal. seeing lately, Tim, for a surface temp, do you know? Uh, 73. Yep. I bet you well, might be in the bay yesterday. I had 77. Give me two seconds, and I'll tell you what our surface temp is here. Oh, there's another one. This is a, Just like oh, that. This is a good one. Nervous, Nervous Minnow is minnow. on fire awesome. on Lake Champlain. Macho is probably going crazy behind <laughs> that camera right uh, now, chomping at the bit. Uh, 71 right now, Tim, on the surface here. I reference that bird dog feeling that I get at the launch. <laughs> I think we got it today. What do you say, Macho? You kill, you dying over there or what? We'll, we're going to get you on a rod we'll here pretty him soon. On a rod. You got yeah. it. You'll get your turn. The day is young. We get one more fish, we'll have our show. <laughs> Keep me busy netting. That's what I like. I think this is a better fish. You know, Tim, I think you totally get it, both filming and guiding. Pressure definitely makes a difference in any fish we're targeting. Yeah. Here we got a day <clears throat> that there's nobody else out around us. Yep. Uh, jigging's getting more popular each year. A fair amount of guides are doing it now, and um, it all depends on the location, you know, and obviously weather. Today we've got a south wind, six to eight right now, and they're saying it's going to build later on, but it's not unfishable, it's manageable. And we hope for those days with a little chop and not much more. <laughs> Right. The wind gets more rugged and uh, the trolling motor has to work harder. Thank the good Lord for Minn Kota spot lock feature. It's keeping the boat right in place for us right now with minimal drift. It's worth its weight in gold. It really it? is. Yeah. And what a great feature. We uh, I give some, I give a seminar last night on exactly what we're doing right now. And, you know, I talked about alternatives to slowing your drift, like drift socks. And, and this is my first year with a with a Minn Kota on my boat sure. with a spot lock, and it just there's no comparison to being able to to stay in one area or to bump yourself around or slowly move around if you need to. Yeah, this is a nice fish. This is definitely bigger than the other one. Either that, or he's just angrier at me. And we we talked also about i talk a lot about pressure i def, i'm right with you with the pressure on these fish you know there are days and when a pisaki like once once that bite it's a little behind this year once it really sets up you'll show up to these spots and there'll be a black line at 100 feet 
and that's that's the lake trout. Sure. They're, they are like somebody drew a line on the graph at yep. 100 feet. We see the same thing here, especially springtime. You'll see that right at 100 foot, you know, 9,500. You'll see that same line. It's all stacked lake trout. Yep. And when we move into that area, we're usually the only ones jigging. There might be one or two other boats, but there'll be 15 boats trolling. Sure. And within an hour, they're all jigging. Yep. And and I. I you know, I tell people at my seminars, just imagine what it looks like down there at 100 feet, all the jigs bouncing up and down, They're bouncing up and down. The same thing. Fish you getting caught, it. fish getting released, fish, food getting regurgitated. Like, you know, it just, it's it's turmoil down there. And, sure. and so it's, you know, about an hour of that and those fish start to shut off. They're still there, but they won't bite those jigs anymore. Uh, last year, we, we started, you know, playing around with uh, changing the size, putting on a bigger jig. Yep. A 2.8 ounce Elites and when the pressure got really high and that bigger jig displaced more water got more attention something a little bit different no doubt no doubt and it was just that change and we nicknamed it big blue no kidding yeah so is that how you started with the nervous minnow idea <sighs> sort of yep and it's <laughs> it's living up to its name on champlain no doubt it uh, made me very happy yesterday I had a client on the water. She she'd never caught a freshwater fish in her life. Isn't that awesome? Grew up on Long Island, striper fishing and blue fishing. Had never caught a, a freshwater fish. Her first freshwater fish was an eight-pound lake trout on a nervous minnow. That's awesome. Yeah. She I was, love getting people there first. She was so happy. I was happy. I told her, I said, that's what you call going from zero to hero in about 0.2 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> oh, yeah. a better fish. Nice. Oh, he's tail hooked. Ah. That occasionally happens. Yeah. That always makes him feel a lot bigger. He's not happy now. I just saw the boat. <laughs> just saw the boat. Yeah, he's he's on his way back down. <laughs> I'm gonna let him go. He's tail hooked, so he's feels like he's about twice his size he is. Still a nice fish. Still though. a great fish. Yeah. yeah. That one's gonna be pushing ten pounds. We might have to like bring out the. Makes you feel a lot bigger when you got him in the tail. Yeah. He's not happy. Won't surprise me if he pops off here. Yeah. Actually, I got one the other day. Is this a treble or single hook, Jake? Treble. Yeah. They'll probably stay hooked up. I got one the other day with a treble and got him netted okay. Yeah, our Lakers in Winnipesaukee, uh, if we fish single hooks with these jigs, I have to switch them out to like a, a small a sawash hook. Yep because those, those heavy black yep. uh, VMC hooks, I think they, they can see them and they get spooked sure. by Sure. That's what I've done with all mine. I've switched them out to the Siwash. Got him right in the vent. <laughs> oh, poor guy. I'm so sorry. <laughs> that is a beauty. Wow. Hey, Burping he's away. Grunting, That's talking good. away to us here. Nice fish. Wow. There we are. Just like that. Look at that. That's why we drove three hours and left at 4.30 this morning. That is a beautiful fish. I think uh, I'll have Macho put the camera down, break out his nice camera and get a photo of this real quick. Get it back in the water. On average, how old is a 35 inch lake trout? Is it A, 10 to 20 years old, B, 15 to 30 years old, or C, 30 to 40 years old? The answer when we return. Fishing pressure, as far as I'm concerned, is nowhere near some of the other waterways. As I said, I offer tr uh, trips for King Salmon on Lake Ontario, and during the staging time, it's nothing to see 50 to 70 boats work in the same water a mile from shore during that prime time. You will never see that here. It's a, a lot like the northern New England lakes where there's limited pressure, a lot of scenery. You've got the Adirondacks to the west, the Green Mountains to the east. Um, the downtown of Burlington is literally a 10 minute drive, a lot of food and festivals and uh, places to attend. There's concerts, you name it. Um, great place to come up and enjoy the scenery and the, and the fishery that Vermont and New York offer. Now we'd had some experience with the Nervous Minnow on Lake Winnipesaukee because the jig had been on the market for a little while and we, and we were doing well, but now Lake Champlain is a whole different fishery than Lake Winnipesaukee in terms of the caliber of fish, the fish there are, are averaging in the 10 pound range and they're a much more aggressive fish. I mean, I've had fish, I've hooked fish in that lake 
reeled them up 10, 15 feet off the bottom, had them come unbuttoned, dropped my jig to the bottom and watched the same fish on the fish finder swim down and pick up the same jig and eat it again. It's just a whole different animal. That sort of thing almost never happens on Lake Winnipesaukee and the size of the fish are a lot smaller. So I wasn't really sure what to expect when we got there and we got out on the water and I was doing my typical um, slow, kind of a slow jig pop here and a pop there but the nervous minnow has a tendency in deep water to foul so you have to be careful with that so I was trying to be mindful of that boy it didn't take me long just some trial and error uh, I'm popping that jig popping reel popping reel I'm, I'm popping it up and reeling about a half to a full crank each time I do and just letting it settle pop it up reel down a half to a full crank and let it settle and I'll tell you what I just could not keep the lake trout off that jig that seems to be that seems to be my uh, my cadence today is just that on the fall jig and reel. No, yeah. I'm just popping it up and reeling one crank, pop it up, reel one crank, and they're hitting it. Oh, like that. There you go. Look at that. Damn, you got it. Nervous down, minnow again. Every drop so far. I could get used to this, Matt. Oh, I'm hooked too. There oh, we go. Oh, oh, lost oh, it. No. Lost I'll, it. I'll hold it down there. <laughs> you know what? We'll take that off, film. He broke off. No, he didn't. I couldn't feel the jig coming up. He chased that up 50 feet, fellas. Wow. I was three quarters away back up to the top when he hit that. So. <laughs> That's why I didn't feel like there was any weight there. <laughs> and what did you say the limit is on these per day? Three. Three, 15 inch minimum? Yep. Oh, just came off. He come off. Yep. There we go. Nice, look at that. Yeah, that same retrieve, just popping it as I reel. That, the last one that I lost, it was not very far below the boat. No kidding, yeah, it came all the way up. Way, way yeah. up. Yeah, like I said, many times they follow it on the up. <coughs> this has got some weight to it, too. Good, good, good. <coughs> yeah, no real head shakes yet, but weight. So do you find you have to bring them up slow? They have a you know hard time going back down if you don't. Well, you know, obviously we talk about um, anybody fish for lake trout, their air bladder, and if I can tell, you know, definitely look at them, see that they look bloated. We'll try and you know gently massage without taking all their slime off and try and burp that air out. Yep. Um, I definitely, and again, like you said, you're bringing fish up not only from the depths, but into uh, pretty warm water. You know, down there they're in the mid 40 degree range. They really like that high 40s uh, as their comfortable area and they're coming up to surface water in the 70s. So right. I take my time and trying to release them. Uh, Seems like that was probably a burp there. Yep. That's, that's typical for Winnipesaukee. You got it. We yeah. saw the bubbles there just a second ago. Yeah. He probably burped. There we go. Yeah, there it is some more. That's a, my struggle as a guide with clients when we're in 100 feet of water, especially those smaller ones, they want to crank them right up. Yep. And I tell them that bladder will actually burst inside their body and you then they're it. not going back down. Yep. No, I tell my clients, take your time, work them up slow. Nice fish. There he is. Real nice fish. Wow. That might even be bigger than the last one. Unreal. I could get used to this, Matt. <laughs> That's what I like. You might never get rid of me. <laughs> there you are, sir. Beauty. Another nice fish. That's nice. What a beautiful fish. Lake Champlain, third alarm charters, check them out. Matt's the man. First spot we came to, he put us on fish right away. Thanks, Matt. Not a problem, Tim. Thank this you is, guys for coming out and joining this us today. This fun. The answer is C, 30 to 40 years old. In most waters, lake trout only grow two to four inches per year for the first four years of their life. After that, growth slows to one inch or less per year. The oldest lake trout ever recorded was 62 years old and came from Kamenurik Lake in Canada's Northwest Territory. So obviously one of the nice things I was talking about, the diversity of Lake Champlain, 127 miles long, um, great warm water fishing in both the south end and the north end, and it's bordered by New York on the west side, Vermont to the east side. Um, you know, we can target just about anything under the sun from late March as far as open water fishing goes right to Thanksgiving and uh, a fleet of guys that I know here that are avid trollers 
known as the Frostbite Fleet, and they will troll all winter long as long as the boat ramps are open. So uh, a Vermont and or New York license, they're reciprocal here on Lake Champlain, so either one is good. Um, and uh, the nice thing with guys having New York licenses, I offer a lot of other stuff uh, on Ontario and also the Salmon River, so the license is good for a multitude of different times of the year and different species. Now the owners of Daddy Mac Lures, Jack Houghton and Dennis Daddy Mac McDonald, are avid vertical jig fishermen. It's one of the one of the things that we have in common. It's one of the reasons we get along so well, other than them being, you know, just great guys. They're like family, but they have a couple of techniques that that they have coined names for. Um, like Daddy Mackin is a particular style of jigging that they do mostly for like black sea bass out around Cape Cod. Uh, but there's one technique that they use for just about every species that they fish for called the Daddy Mac drop. And that's when you get a hit, you miss the fish, you just open the bale immediately and let that jig free fall. And you'd be surprised at the number of times, whether it's black sea bass fishing, striped bass fishing, or lake trout fishing through the ice or open water, you'd be surprised the number of times that that actually works. Guys, oh. and there you go. He hit it and I did the Daddy Mac drop. Dennis is going to be so happy. That fish hit. On the drop. And I missed him. Yeah. And I just let it free fall back down and he grabbed it again on the way down. Too awesome. I can see him streaking back it's down. A nice, he hit him this, about 60 feet down. This is a nice fish. Dennis, that one was for you if you're watching this. <laughs> you better watch this. <laughs> well, I definitely, as uh, Tim's talking about the guys, cannot say enough about Dennis and Jack and the family at Daddy Mac Lures. They have been incredible with me and uh, getting us going up here in uh, New York and Vermont and obviously Tim bringing the new Nervous Minnow along today. It's, we're showing it's working, there's no question about it. Yeah, I can't stop this fish. <laughs> That's awesome. That fish can have some shoulders. Um, you hit the nail on the head, Matt, when you mentioned the word family. They are, those guys are, they bring, they bring us in. Oh man. I think I'm going to get spooled here. <laughs> Look at that fish go. Yeah, that's, you know, when I met uh, Jack and the guys two years ago and they interviewed me to come on board, my son Logan, who mates for me on the big charter boats and um, helps me out guiding, he was at the booth at the trade shows and they love that uh, atmosphere, had him being involved and he's been in the outdoors since he could climb into my backpack and uh, He's out fishing and hunting me now. He's a great wing shot when it comes to water fouling. But Jack said, you know what, Matt, just the way you and Logan work with each other, that's what we're all about as family. And, and he hit it on the nail head. No two ways about it. Yeah. It's funny. I was, I was introduced to Jack through an email from a friend of mine that used to work for Coastal Angler Magazine. Just said, thought maybe you two could help each other out. Sure. And first thing Jack did was book an ice fishing trip with me. And... We just clicked. We clicked right away. We had, we both, you know, I vertical jig through the ice very similarly to the way he vertical jigs for striped bass. Sure. And we hit it off. We had a great time. We caught fish. You know, it was one of those days where I was a total hero. We caught lake trout all morning long. And it started, you know, it gets old. It got a little slow. And I said, you want to go catch, oh no, we caught white perch all morning. And I said, you want to go catch some Lakers? And he said, sure. And now I wish I could do this every trip. We went to a spot and we caught Lakers all afternoon. And he was go. like, oh my God. Uh, that doesn't always happen. Sure. We try to make it happen best, as you know, best you can. You try to know the spots and know where you can go and when. But um, they asked me to come on board and, and it was funny. He, I, I made a joke about a, a lure that I had in my mind for years, a soft plastic. And he said, well, we can make anything. Draw me a picture. And I said, well, art is not my strong suit. <laughs> and I drew him, a, drew him a crude drawing of this soft plastic that I'd had in my head. It was kind of a combination of a bunch of different lures. And a few weeks later, I get an email with a screenshot of a, here comes some bubbles, a CAD drawing of the Whisperer. The Whisperer, yep. And that lure has proven really good for Lakers. Sure. A lot of pike. Yep. A four and a quarter inch lure. I've seen pike over 40 inches. No kidding. Eat that lure. Yep. Well, I use it a lot bass fishing. Uh, definitely works. Nice fish. Wow. Oh my god. That is a beast. Nice, nice fish. <laughs> Look at the head on him. That is a beast of a lake trout. Oh my god. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Let me get you all your tools here. Here's the gripper. Wait Beautiful till you see this fish. fish. 
Every one I've caught's been bigger than the last. I, I think we've That's set the bar pretty high on this one, though. That is a nice, wow. Right in the tip of the snout. Yeah, that's that's that loop back around to chase it on the Daddy Mac drop. That's what Dennis nicknamed it. That that's that's his trademark move. When he gets a bump, first thing he does is is open his bail. That Den Daddy Mac was named after Dennis McDonald, one of the owners of the company, and that's his signature trick is to free fall after he misses a fish. He's gonna be happy. Look at that. To see that is a nice lake trout. That is my biggest lake trout ever. And if I don't beat it today, it'll be a while before I catch one that big. If that fish ever came out of Lake Winnipesaukee, I'd probably make the front page of the Laconian News or the <laughs> Weirdest Times. Definitely gonna get some nice photos of this fish and hopefully we can film the release too. There it goes. Keep going, baby. Nice. That was my biggest lake trout ever. So far, I should say. Thank you, Matt. Not a problem, Tim. That was awesome. Okay. Congrats. My mouth isn't as strong as Tim's. Freaking right there. Yeah, yeah, I'm right there. Oh, right there.